Thanks so much for having us. Thank you so much for having me. <laughs> In your house. <laughs> In as, my own house. As you said. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Uh, you're such an incredible artist from the Central Coast. Tell us a little bit how you got into painting. Goodness me. Well, I guess um, I was always interested in the arts. Um, I always loved drawing and painting as a child. Um, and so it was always a part of who I was. I thought everyone enjoyed drawing and, and painting, but uh, it was not until I went to school when I realised I might have had a little bit of a gift mm. because I used to um, constantly draw and do you know, quite well out of it, uh, winning art each year at school. Um, it wasn't until year seven when I found out that um, it may not be my destiny because uh, I was always used to enjoy painting fairly quick, had all the school kids watching me behind, my friends. And as I was uh, painting, the school teacher said, don't watch what Neil's doing, you watch me. He'll never amount to anything, so just watch me. Mm. So I left art that day and so ended up... Um, following my dad's footsteps, becoming a builder, uh, a carpenter, and did tech drawing. And that was sort of funny as it worked out because there was still a lot of um, art in tech drawing with vanishing points and a uh, perspective and, and stuff. But I pursued then a uh, life of being a carpenter, a builder for many, mm. many years. Wow. But then you came back to painting. I came back. <laughs> you've, got to, you've got to fill us in that little thing of that defining yeah. moment, you know. Look, I, I, I love people and I was um, doing a job for a, a friend of mine who actually I saw at the surf only this morning. But anyway, uh, he asked me to be godfather for his, for his son and I ended up uh, taking up the challenge and asking him uh, or thanking him very much. I thought he mustn't have very many friends, but I said, thank you, I'll, I'll be your God, uh, godfather for your son. And it was amazing. It was a real crossroads for me because it was uh, at that little church that I went to where the message that I was listening seemed to be just for me. It ended up saying, I still remembered it like it was yesterday. It said, don't bury your gift, but use your gift wisely. And mm. at that stage, I really did bury what little gift I thought I had. I didn't use it. Mm. I, I, you know, paint one or two paintings a year and give them to my Auntie Alice or, mm. <laughs> or whoever, but it wasn't serious. I really did bury that gift. And so I really, that day, I was a carpenter up till that day and I did a deal with God. I said, if this is real, if you're real, if this is meant to be, open the doors or quickly shut them because I don't want to be caught in limbo. Mm. And the doors supernaturally opened. So one day I, I was a builder, the next day I was a full-time artist. Wow. And all these opportunities opened up. You were overseas, right? You had, tell yeah, us a little bit about look, that. It, it was just, a, I guess, a natural progression with, mm. you know, my love for art. Mm. Uh, had exhibitions on the Central Coast. I was asked to have a, a one-man exhibition within six months of doing these little artworks and trying out galleries and going to different places. And that was a 43 painting sellout. I was wow. so amazed that um, there were so many people on the Central Coast with bad taste and bad eyesight maybe, but <laughs> I sold out and I ended up um, then having a few more opportunities. Another exhibition in Sydney went well. Mm. The year after that, I won the Verve Clico Art Prize, mm -hmm. which was a trip to Paris wow. and Florence. Yeah. You know, so there has been opportunities that's progressed as the years have gone by mm. and I, I'm so thankful and you know it's amazing to do something that you love doing mm. and when uh, the doors of opportunity open it's such a delight mm, it's wonderful because you've had some sales to some pretty incredible people and I noticed a theme of politicians in there senior George W Bush <laughs> and then John Howard is any other politicians in there um, <laughs> oh there's actually uh, one on the on the coast uh, I won't mention his name, he's a lovely fellow. Mm. But um, yeah, look, I don't know how that has, has come about uh, with the politician thing. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah, look, John Howard actually had um, uh, one of my uh, little art books of, of different uh, examples of my artworks mm -hmm. there. And evidently, Janet, his wife, um, 
uh, had the art book and they went away on a trip. And so, yeah, look, I uh, was lucky enough that they got a little artwork yeah. of mine. Maybe it's a bit of your softness and nature in their <laughs> lives, you know? You've got well, them. I'm not sure, but, you know, I was... I, I think with art, no matter what you do, I really believe it's not necessarily um, what you do, but your heart behind what you do. Mm. You know, if you trying to just strive and struggle to be the best person on earth, it doesn't necessarily work out mm. the best. So I got approached by uh, an art dealer in America mm. um, and he said, I love your work, uh, can I get 10 paintings? I said, 10 paintings? <laughs> what do you want them for? I've only got 10 fingers trying to work out the price. Uh, but he said, look, it's for a union rescue mission. Mm. We look after a wonderful charity in America. So I just said, look, you can have the paintings at, at cost, what it was cost, cost me. Price, yeah. And then lo and behold, I found out that senior president George Bush was the patron of that um, charity. And he said, I like that boy's work <laughs> and got two artworks oh, and, and, that's how it and put them in the White House. Wow. Uh, and as far as I know, they're still there. Yeah. Maybe the taller of the White House, yeah. but they're in the White House. Wow. Um, and so... You know, as I say, I tried to, you know, help out a good cause and mm. next thing I find out that Senior President George Bush got a couple of my artworks, so pretty crazy. Well, that's amazing. <laughs> so it is amazing. let's get into a bit of the nitty gritty with the details. You started out with plain air and you said you were quite disciplined, seven days a week. Yeah. Is that correct? What age was that? Uh, that would have been um, at 29, mm -hmm. I ended up. Uh, for those who are trying to do the maths, I'm 60 now, so 31 mm -hmm. years ago, um, I ended up um, doing the transformation and getting into carpentry, to art, and I was just so captivated and excited. Mm. Everything I'd look, I'd look at it as a subject, and mm. the light, how the colours, the subject. Mm. I'd be driving along and looking at different images that I could paint, and I'd have my paints in the back, so quite often, I'd pull over on the side of the road and wow. just start painting. And I guess I was disciplined, but it was more like a, a love, a driving love that I would paint seven days a week yeah. and rain, hail or shine, mm. I'd be out there. And I think it was a wonderful, um, for three years I did that. And I think it was a wonderful discipline of the school of life. Mm. And it's not always easy painting outdoors because um, the light changes so quickly, of course, um, that. wind, uh, clouds, um, people, mm. flies, yeah. and sometimes both, yeah. flies and people. Mm, exactly. <laughs> so it could be quite uh, distracting and annoying <laughs> to concentrate on mm. what you're doing and trying to capture it so quick. Because mm. you know? to me, it's not necessarily observation, but it's interpretation. It's art from the heart. And sometimes when you capture it down very quick, you capture the essence mm. of what it is. So that helped you have less attachment to the outcome in some ways. You were kind of in yeah. that moment, just need, yeah, to, guess so. need to get yeah, it out. I never out. thought of it like that, but yeah, yeah often you were so transfixed in the moment yeah. that um, it, it, time just flew mm. and it was all about capturing it. And, you know, there's something about when you're you know, painting on the beach, you can almost see that it's an onshore wind blowing and smell the sea breeze mm. rather than... Kodak blue and a little bit of, <laughs> yeah. you know, green and yeah. I'm going to put a bit of turquoise in because yeah. it's our favourite colour. Yeah. Um, and you can lose a little bit of um, the realism of losing yourself and capturing what's there. Okay, amazing. So what would be some advice for people working with oils and plain air? This sort of, me it's, it's all the messiness. You with the elements, <laughs> you with the sticky oils. Yeah. What's some advice for our Central Coast up and coming painters? I think two words, brush mileage. Okay. So brush mileage is just keep going. You know, the first paintings that I did, I could use them as frisbees now. Mm. <laughs> I cringe. Oh, that's terrible. Mm. Um, and, you know, hopefully I'll feel like that in a couple of years with what I'm doing now. It's all about, you know, it's the journey, not the destination, you know, and you get to a good destination as you progress in the journey. Mm. You know, like um, as Ken Duncan once said, don't miss the journey for the destination. I think a lot of people, they get so 
focus on the on the destination that it's got to look like this got to look enjoy mm. the process mm. and that enjoyment will come out mm. so the more you do the better you'll become mm. but what about inspiration blocks i guess that's the biggest question for any artist but on the days that you didn't want to paint maybe later on in life what's your what's your secret to just get to that canvas still and still you yeah, know look, these days i'm a bit more lazy i suppose well not lazy let's uh, We'll use that word, yeah. distracted by yeah. the ocean. Yeah. Um, I go surfing a lot, mm -hmm. you know, I surf as we talked before, maybe once or twice or three times a day. Mm. And I just like to think of it as lubricating my paintbrush, mm -hmm. you know, because when you're out there in the ocean, you observe things. And I got a passion for the ocean and seascapes mm. and beaches and capturing a moment in time by the water. And I think that's the key, mm. you know, is art from the heart. Mm. Your passion mm. will come out. If mm. you enjoy it, it will come out. And so now I don't try and labor when I don't feel like it. Yeah. Um, I'll go surfing and and I'll di be disciplined if I've got an artwork to do, I'll do that. And because I've enjoyed what I'm doing, it will show in the artwork mm. that I'm about to do. And it's surprising some of the elements that I've observed, maybe the sparkling, the glittering water yeah. um, or the color when you see that transparent wave break, what will come out in mm. what you do, and sometimes you'll get um, extra bang for your buck because uh, what I've experienced is now a reality of what I'm working through. Amazing. No, that, that definitely makes sense. What do you think is the importance of art on our walls in general? Because some people live literally with blank walls, you know, and mm. what do you think art does for us, especially for children as well, and growing up with having art on your walls? What do you think is? Look, there's, I think art is magical. It's amazing. Um, you know, I've got the first artwork here in this house that I bought in 1982. Wow. And I've still got it. Why? Because I love it. Mm. It's a part of me. I think art is living. It's mm. 3D dimensional. Mm. You can feel the texture. Mm. You know, it's, it's something about it that uh, you can see different things at different times of day where mm. it's an experience. It's mm. a part of who you are. And I think that's why that um, terminology, art, beauty, you know, art is in the, what is it? The uh, art is in the beauty. Beauty in the, the eye of the beholder? Yes. <laughs> I knew we were going to get yeah, that. Yeah, beauty in the eye of the yeah. beholder, yeah. And because everyone's a different beholder. Yeah. And so art is very individual. Mm. Um, and every and so there's so many different... Uh, people's taste of what they enjoy but the big thing is uh, you know have art because you enjoy it yeah you can relate to it mm. it's something about it that makes you feel good mm. that when you look at it you think ah, you mm. know I'm home yeah you know? and there's something great about that and you know to me art is something I never get sick of mm. and never take for absolutely. granted absolutely <laughs> and growing old with the painting like you can have paintings on the walls for years yeah. 20, 20 years longer well, they, you know <laughs> You know, I might have room uh, yeah. on these walls, but I always have room yeah. because each painting can have a well-earned break. Mm. And so I'll put another artwork on that spot and it can have a holiday, yeah. have a little rest. It's yeah. done its job. It's, it's been, it. been a, you know, well done, good and faithful servant. You can sit down and put a new artwork there. And what it does, it just changes mm. the atmosphere. It changes the place. And so, you know, there's always room uh, to me for an artwork, no matter how old I get or what I do, I want it still to be current. Yeah. And I want to be current in what I do and what I feel and what I see uh, to to respond in rather than just painting as a process. Yeah. You know, to me, I, I love it. Mm. I enjoy it. So Absolutely. each painting that I do, it's a challenge, mm -hmm. uh, but it's an enjoyable challenge. Oh, <laughs> incredible. Speaking of challenges, can you tell us a little bit about owning galleries you said 30 years 30 years goodness me 30 what's years. the biggest takeaway because there would be quiet weeks obviously sometimes you know you'd sell out or like yeah you tell us what's some some takeaways um mcdonald's that's a takeaway <laughs> uh, I, think, Jack's <laughs> <AFC>. <laughs> I think biggest takeaways from mm. owning art galleries is um it's a challenge mm. it's a it's, look, I would not wish that on the faint-hearted because <laughs> Love it. Um, owning galleries, you, you've got so many things to consider. It's not just, oh, I'm going to have a gallery and put my artworks in there. Um, 
you got to think about um, a gallery lease, a space, mm. um, staff, seven days a week. Um, the, uh, all the rest that goes with that. Mm. So there's a lot of overheads which can put on a big demand mm. of um, you as an artist to perform and create, mm. to pay for the bills uh, that are associated with that. And if you have a quiet month, yeah. and then another quiet month in winter time on the exactly. coast, it can get quite, uh, when I was at the Crown Plaza, it was, um, you know, sometimes in winter time, it'd be raining and you wouldn't have nothing, any people there, yeah. nothing. You know, and you still got to pay your wages and bills. So, you yeah. know, it'd be 25000 a month with mm. all the costs and three months at $75,000 when it's quiet. Wow. It's like, whoa, we've got to come up with that. Somehow I'm blessed. Somehow yeah. it would come through, but it's not for the faint-hearted. And I did it and I enjoyed it and it was great. Met some beautiful friends along the way who worked for me and mm. uh, clients. But it's uh, a very different dimension from being in the studio and painting and creating and being in the corporate world yeah. and selling It's the business work. cap, right? Yeah, you yeah. Can make sure you put the right cap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and the, I don't know if I've got too many more business caps around, but <laughs> I've got some messy painting art caps. Oh, but yeah, so it's, um, you know, I have now um, moved just before COVID mm. uh, from my gallery in Terrigal and amazing timing because now I've been just selling online and word of mouth and you know, getting orders even from, um, you know, we were just talking from San Diego, uh, San Diego mm. California. Mm. So, you know, I enjoy doing commission works for people. Mm. And to me, I get a real joy going to a person's place and working with the client, oh, amazing. coming up with a design yeah. that we collaborated together mm. and having the finished product, which showcases their house. Coming up with a design still from a photo of an outdoor or anything now, like? Uh, yeah, anything, anything, you know, yep. like it, it could be um, the people live in a coastal location and their heart is, you know, uh, a terrible or something. Yeah, so got you, got having you. images around there that they can relate to yeah. and that ties into the area. Yeah. You know. Okay. Uh, obviously living on the coast for a long time, how has that played being inspiration in your artwork? Oh, look, mm, immensely so. Yeah. Um, Central Coast has got endless um, subjects and opportunities as an artist to capture. You know, you can drive past a, a beautiful place on the coast that you can take for granted. Like even Shelley Beach yesterday, it was, you know, quite large waves and there was a jet ski out there and uh, towing in surfboards. It was you know, wow, huge. And I was just looking at these waves that was just breaking. I thought I should have a, shouldn't be here just watching the, the surfing. And even though it was so spectacular, should be there capturing this, you mm. know, the, the power and the excitement mm. of the um, energy of the ocean. And yet, um, three days before, it was flat. Mm. You know, so it each it, every day, uh, you know, the ocean and and the landscape just changes. Mm. It, the light affects the subjects yeah. so it's really important to i think not to get bored or lethargic you know but to uh you know see every subject as an opportunity and so i never get bored i Absolutely. never i never get uh, complacent with um you know the endless amount of subjects that's on the coast i love the coast um and you know for any artist that's coming up, I'd probably say to be encouraged, you know, like I've uh, been painting for many years, but you know, that brush mileage, it, it, don't be disheartened. I think half the thing as an artist is we sometimes uh, don't believe in ourselves where you think, oh, that's terrible, should do better. And you know, words, love language of an artist is words of affirmation. So it's really important. Um, get your friends or your mm. your mum or dad or your family members to support what you do and you'll go a long way. You know, it's really important just to, to encourage people no matter what they do. You get the best out of someone when you encourage them, not put them down. You know? Absolutely. Speaking of encouragement then, on that note, I know you said you're not trained, but have you thought about teaching more often then, you know, sharing your skills with younger people because you're doing teaching with a lady yes. soon right yes. have you thought about doing i know you want less work but have you thought about um teaching yeah, yeah. well uh, 
Yeah, look, those opportunities come up time to time. I'm actually being asked to go into schools and, and uh, being in front of a lot of people mm. and painting live and showing, you know, my, uh, I guess, my take on how I do things mm. and try and bring that in an encouraging way to students mm. particularly. So I really enjoy that. Um, mm. And, you know, there's only so much you can do. Yeah, of course. And it's really important to, you know, target what you uh, are meant to do. Mm. But one of the Absolutely. things I'm really meant to do, I believe, is help and encourage people as well. Yeah, incredible. So I love it. Yeah. Well, thanks so much for having us here. Well, thank you. It's been a pleasure. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Um, yeah, appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Thank you.